Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Today we're going to be setting up a tank for green jade shrimp. This video is also sponsored by Aqua L. Okay, let's start off with the tank. This is a 49 liter uh, cube, which is really, really nice. Let me show you what it looks like over here. Beautiful cube, nice little Aqua L barge in the front. And um, these are the things that you get in this uh, fish and shrimp set duo from Aqua L, right? You got a big, massive filter. You got a light here, there's also a heater included that's probably still in the box, I haven't seen it yet. Um, this is an automatic heater as well, which means there's no fiddling around with dials or nothing like that. So this is a really, really good set. I want to thank Aqua L for sending me this stuff to set up this Green Jade video. Okay, let's talk about the filter here. And some of the issues that we might have with this setup here. This is where I have decided to put this tank. Right, and the tank is a very, very good size for here, right? But the only issue is on the back, on the sides over here, there's absolutely no space for this very large hang on back filter, right? But it doesn't mean to say that I will never use this somewhere else again. Uh, this is a really, really top notch hang on back filter. It's actually got the shrimp safe sponges and stuff on it as well. I actually badly needed this type of filter for a tank like this over here. This big, big tank, right? So we will do something with it, with this filter on this tank. Um, I also want to talk about the slim uh, lady, slim LED lights from Aquil as well. These are absolutely top-notch lights. And um, I have a couple of the very large ones, which I'll show you in a second. This is the 10 watt version. Let's have a little look. It says a uh, sunny and plant. So which is probably between six and a half thousand and eight thousand Kelvin, right? These are cracking lights. Let me show you what I mean. Lady Slim. Very nice slim LEDs. I have a couple of them. The Aqua L have sent me previously before. I've had these lights for a couple of years as well, so they're very, very good. Very nice looking slim LED light. Right, so let's, guys, let's get onto the tank. Um, I've decided not to paint the back of this because this backboard here is already black. I've done the basic stuff that you guys should always do when you do a tank like this and that is uh, clean the tank on the inside and outside with a little bit of detergent have a little bit of washing up liquid more specifically and one or two drops give it a clean with a sponge inside and outside uh, dry it with a paper towel and then you're good to go right so the plan here is to uh, set up this tank as quickly as possible guys because I have um, green jade shrimp coming probably next week right I have a very dark uh, strain of green jades coming so we need to set this tank up very quickly right? so because it's a neo caradina tank as well we can go with sand on the bottom which I have over here sand on the bottom uh, because we can't fit that big massive filter, the hop filter there on. We're actually going to go with another Aqua L product here, which is amazing. This is the best filter I've ever had. I probably have uh, roughly 30 of these filters in my tanks. Every single tank that you see in this room, I have 20 plus tanks. I have one or two of these in every single tank, right? This is the modification with the double sponge part on it. So that's what we've done. I've taken this from another Neo Caradina tank because the flow on these guys is amazing look at the flow in this the water is a little bit low because we've taken some water that will go in our other tank this has to be topped up but just to give you an idea of the flow of such a small pump like this and you can see the double sponge filter on it as well very very powerful pump for the size and the cost okay, so we have uh, this uh, pat mini filter here as I said we have the sponges in here already this is the stuff that we will be using guys by the way for um, this tank. first we're gonna go ask for elbow right I normally never put the water in first but we're gonna put the water in first today because we're gonna add sand to this and uh, the sand will be easier to go in if we add the water first you'll see what I mean in a second right so we're gonna take some of the tank water that we've gotten from our painted fire red tank that you can't see and I'm actually gonna pour it in from this side right so hopefully this actually goes in easier than I imagine. If it doesn't all go in, I'll have to find another way to do this, but we need to get some water in here because the sand that we have to go in here uh, will spread out and go along the bottom much, much easier if we have uh, water in the bottom in the first place, right? So we're going to put some water in here. 
That's about as much as I can get in. Let's see if we can grab the sand. Now it's a little bit tight fit here, but it doesn't matter if it splashes because we already have water in here. Right, so this is what I mean here. We have roughly about a litre of sand. As I put it in, you'll see what I mean. Right, so give it a shake. This sand actually came from another tank as well. It's been cleaned. It was uh, pretty yucky. Come on, get out. The joys of building rocks with uh, not really much arm space. Come on, get out of here. Right, so in this, we have went for quite a thin base of sand. And I'm starting to do that more in my tanks where there's no rim on the bottom. Because as a YouTuber, I need you guys to be able to see what it exactly is I'm doing in the tank. Right, so we're going with a, a thinner base in the tank on the bottom. It's barely even a quarter of a centimetre. All I want here, guys, is just enough to cover the bottom. You'll see what I mean once this is set up. And I know some of you guys will be saying, but Mark, what about the anaerobic bacteria? Well, I've thought about that as well. So this is enough sand for this tank. I'm going to add some, uh, some lava rock to this tank. We'll add that right now before we add the rest of the water. Little bits of uh, lava rock. And this is where my anaerobic bacteria can live in here as well. Because uh, there'll be spaces in this rock where uh, there's like very little to no flow. And that is what we need for anaerobic conditions. I'm just going to pile them here. As I said, this tank just needs a quick setup. We're going to add a piece of java fern. And this is already on a piece of wood. Which is lovely. This came also came from the painted fire red tank. Now this is probably about as basic as we're going to go. We're going to add um, a leaf that also came out of the painted fire red tank. And then guys we're going to add the filter into it here. Do it while it's low. It's Aqua L Pack Mini. And this is a good time to do this because it shows you if there's any issues like um, at the back here, you can't see this, but there's it's a little bit too close to the back for me to put the Aqua L Pop mini filter. Um, I don't know what you would call it like the little thing that holds the Pop mini filter up off the ground. You can just see it here. Right, so let's turn it around. Let's get this to the front. Looking good. Make sure it's nice and straight for the camera. Press then on full power, right, and then we'll add the um, what do you call them? The sponges. Before I do this, guys, I'm just making sure there's no painted fire reds actually on the sponges because uh, this this came from a working tank. As I said, I'm just giving them a little bit of squeeze here. I probably put the water that I've squeezed into the tank as well. Another tip for you guys: get this in there. I can see a little bit. It's a wasser tank too, which is good. And then I'm going to fill it up. We have prepared some water with uh, some mineral mix. Salt and mineral GHKH plus to 190 parts per million. That will give me a lovely, a lovely GH of around six, TDS uh, KH of around four. Hopefully that's straight enough. Let me have a little look from the front. I want it to be straight-ish. I actually think, no, I thought that was there. I thought it was like a spixy snail, but it's not. Right, so the, all this stuff here will probably just fall over. Uh, this java fern, I want to place it at the back because I love big, big uh, java ferns in a tank right? and I never really have them in my tanks because the snails tend to eat it. So we will go with uh, Malaysian trumpet snails in here, nothing big that will eat the, the leaves. Okay guys, while this is filling up we'll go over to the next tank. Let me just pan down a little bit here so you can see some action of the water going into the tank. I like to aim it into the corner. Here we have a little tip for you guys if you want to collect Malaysian trumpet snails in a tank right. 
instead of putting your hand in and out of the tank constantly to get one snail every single time and then have the dryer hand because it drips this is what I do, I use a little shot glass a set of tweezers this tank you're looking at is my Blue Dream tank it has been set up for approximately uh, three months and now has a very very nice little colony of Blue Dreams right, so you put your shot glass in like this, this tank's already been fed today I'm going to grab some of the larger Malaysian trumpet snails like this, just put it in the shot glass one two three four five, some of these are very large go for one more grab your shot glass your fingers with your Malaysian trumpet snails in it remove from the tank you only have to dry your hand once. Alright guys, here are our Malaysian trumpet snails up over the top. This tank is uh, perfect for them. They have a little bit of substrate. A little bit of substrate which they like to borrow through. And these guys will multiply nicely in here. And the reason I like to use uh, Malaysian trumpet snails guys is because I think they're very very good for aerating the soil, the substrate. Alright guys, while we wait on that tank filling up, uh, we're going to add a little bit of activated carbon to uh, the filter just to give it a little bit extra cleaning power because I want this tank to be super super crystal clear and very clean. I don't want any problems with these shrimp when they come because it's the kind of shrimp I'll probably never be able to buy here really easily again, right? So I want to make sure that these shrimp live. Right, so we have a little foot off a pair of pantyhose here. We have a cup, this uh, pantyhose strip or tip or toe or whatever you want to call it was uh, boiled, pre-boiled to get rid of any uh, detergents, anything like uh, anything like that, you guys don't know what I mean and so you put your pantyhose over the top of your little cup, these are just a plastic cup like this and I do it this way Jack guys, just because it's easy to do right you push it in with your hand and that gives us a nice little pocket for our activated carbon to go into, right? So this stuff here is stuff that I buy uh, locally here in Norway from uh, Uropris and it is actually meant for uh, use in uh, wine making, I think. And so I'm going to put some in. Let me see if I can pour this in. If it, if it plays good. I only want something about the size of golf ball. something like that this will sit guys on top of our pot mini sponge filter okay, so here you can see we have a little ball here like this there's when, many ways you can do this right the best way is just to give it a little swing like this pull down little swing and it all gets pulled to the end and you know guys what to do here you just simply tie it in a overhand knot I like to try and get it compressed a little bit that's why you do this little swing thing. Hopefully it doesn't burst and go all over the place. Overhand knot. If you can do it. Sometimes I've done this before where I haven't given myself enough to even tie a knot. But this time it seems to be fine. Like so. Try and get it all through. See how it's not all through there. And all through. Or it might come undone again. right? So it's all through now. Normally once is enough. This is the kind of thing where you will struggle to get this apart if you do this right, but I'll just do it twice. Just to be on the safe side. And there is our activated carbon sock. Now this will never be used again for anything else. Uh, so I'm just going to cut off the end. I like to use stuff uh, fresh again. And there you have it, right? I'm going to give this a rinse under the tap just to get rid of any dust. And then this will be placed on top of our uh, sponge filter just below the pot mini so here is our activated carbon pouch you can see the pot mini filter here what I'm going to do guys is just try and bring it forward a teeny bit one of the sponges just to get it to sit snugly behind it so I'll put it in there push it in if you like want it to be a snug fit it's not the best looking thing let's try it on the other side because this side we actually see let's push that filter back again let's pull this one on the other side towards us and that one was much easier to come forward and push it down behind. You can see it going down behind. 
Doesn't look so bad on this side, does it? There you go. And there's us added our little pouch of activated carbon, right? This will make this tank super, super crystal clear and make it a very, very healthy environment for our shrimp. We are at the point where we can add our uh, power to our little pot mini filter. Right, so I'm over here behind here. You can't see me, but I'm going to plug it in. Whoop. Hopefully that's come on first time. Let's have a little closer look. Very, very powerful small pump. I love them. As I said, I have about 30 of these in my shrimp room. Let's go to the front and you can see the kind of flow. So here it gives you a little bit better idea of the flow of this little pump. Um, as these sponges get a little bit more clogged up, the flow does um, slow down a little bit. But this uh, pump is also adjustable in the back. I'm not sure if it's even visible here, but just about here where my finger is, there's a little switch that you can push up and down, which lets you adjust the flow. Let's go down and have a look in the tank itself to see what the flow is actually like, because I like to see um, at least a few centimeters a second of flow. I like some movement in my tanks. You can see here, looking at all the particles, that's what we have. I, as I said, it will slow down again. But it's looking good so far. Alright guys, so this is as much water as we're going to get in here today. Uh, so let's add little rice grain size of um, my own biomix. This contains different types of bacteria. Last things to go in guys, before you see the shrimp are, I want to add some more um, oak leaves to the tank just because it looks a little bit bare get some uh, more natural fodder in there for them because the the bacteria that's in here as well will start to decay on this and by the time we get the shrimp there will be lots and lots of food in here right so that is what you will see next is our delivery fingers crossed of beautiful green jade. Hello guys it's been approximately two weeks since you last seen a clip the shrimp are here let's get them unboxed and yes I have had a shave the box is here done the tedious part of uh, untaping it because I, I hate seeing that video it's just so boring we have a drip acclimator in here already which will be going up over and into the tank once we get the shrimp in here right but I thought we'd have a little look at these guys together I haven't had a chance to look at these at all right so these are very very dark they're almost like black green they look really cool I think I ordered 15 to 20 of them they're gonna be very very hard for us to see and these conditions like this until we get them into the tank or if I can let some out and put them in a, a clear acrylic container maybe that's what we'll do but let's get these in here first these guys have been in the post for approximately three days which is quite fast even for Norway um, they're posted late on Monday Monday evening according to the tracking this is double bagged, very good. Double bagged breather bags. Let's check this bag, nothing in it. This one's got an elastic band on the top. I'm aware you can't really see, and I'm not left handed. Whoop, whoop, Mark, you've done all this wrong again. Let's do this with the rubber band way instead of cutting because it, it seems to be easier when we just break the rubber band. <laughs> or maybe not. You're doing this guys as well, just make sure that there's no shrimp in the crease of the bag. Crease of the bags up here, because sometimes they get trapped in these little bits here, right? So, let's get these guys in. We're going to go for a tilt. Like this, I'm grabbing the end, making sure there's no shrimp in it. And into the container like this, and just let them all flow out. Right, some will get stuck in, it is the way of the world. Just gently give it a shuggle, like this. And if you have to, just get a little bit of water back into the bag. And now, you will get this done quite easily, guys. It's, I'm, me, I'm just making this look harder than it is because, of course, shrimp like to stick to things. You see the little one there? Get out. So there's two in the bag still. These guys are super, super dark. Come on, where are you? There's one. Is that one there? I think it's one there, right? So what we'll do is if I can't get these out, I'll actually just turn the bag inside out because there's only one left, you see it? We bugger stuck. Turn the bag inside out and there's the shrimp. Gently touch, there you go. And that's us unbagged. 
our shrimp. I don't think there's anything else in this box. Well, these for a decent price. These are meant to be extra dark as well, which I like. Let's get this. Uh, what's this called? Spiro, something. Looks kind of like the algae spir spirulina. Spir not no spirulina. Spiro spiragella or something like that. Kind of looks kind of similar. Let's have a little look. How many shrimp can you see in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Right, so I've gotten what I've paid for. Um, I think because there's uh, not that much water in here, and it will be easy for me to do, we might actually put these in a little acrylic container just to see if we can see them better than we can now. Right? So here's the container. We're just going to simply pour it in. I'll put you up on top of this uh, tabletop. Some of the shrimps, let's record in macro mode so you guys can see what I can see. Hmm. I'm not sure that shrimp looks blue to me. Let's have a little closer look. Could be because of stress. Yeah, there is green there, but it looks kind of blue. It's probably stress from shipping. Little fella there. Let's have a look over here. Hmm, not so sure. I think we'll get better results uh, once they're in the tank because I can tell they're stressed. This one looks hell of a discolor, doesn't it? For a, a, a more expensive dark green jade. Doesn't really look dark green at all. Looks like a brown shrimp. We'll see. We'll put them in the tank and we'll take it from there. Alright guys, so this is our drip acclimator here. I use an air stone on the end. This part goes in the tank. This stops uh, shrimp climbing into the tube because it does happen. This also um, adds a little bit of weight to, to make sure it stays in the water as you can see like this. Right, So we have a length of tube here with a an airflow valve on the end. I use this for drip acclimation as well. And so all we do here guys is this. Keep your eyes on the man here. We put it in the tank like so. Right, and then down there you could probably just see the tip of the tank. The tip of the tub can you see it? Yeah, just. You can just see it, right? So that is what we're aiming for. We want that little valve to be just in the bucket down there, right? Because I, I like to do it that way because I like there to be more splashing. And of course, I use a teeny bit of tape like this. Just tape it to the tank. Now, when I'm doing this, guys, as well, double, double over a part of the tape on itself. Right? So that just makes it super, super easy to get off when you're done and all you have to do to get this to start is go down to where your valve is open it there's a little knob here little valve and you suck on the pipe give it a good suck just make sure you don't suck in water into your mouth or into your lungs and if you do make sure you use a mouthwash and rinse your mouth okay because you can get bacterial infections from shrimp tanks if you swallow water you see it going into the tank now this is far far too fast right so we want it to be Two or three drips a second, like so. Hopefully this is coming out in camera. One, two, okay, so that's about two or three drips a second. Just let it go in there itself, then we have the shrimp. Like here, and what we're gonna do guys, before we put these fellas into the drip acclimation bucket, I want to see what this water's parameters are, roughly with the TDS, because this will give us a little indication of how long I'm gonna to have to drip this uh, these guys into this tank right so these uh, this tank is set up for 190 parts per million new caradina um, conditions minerals and this one's at 200 right so that's 190 to 200 this will be probably at the very maximum a two hour drip i like to give them lots of extra time i suggest you guys do the same let me see if you guys can see the bottom of the bucket barely right so Let's put them in, tip them in, make sure there's none in the container, and go have your lunch, have a cup of tea, do whatever you like, and we'll be back in an hour or two. Something I forgot about this um, aquarel tank is, I actually forgot to add the, t the light on in the last video, right, so this little light is magnificent. Look at the build quality on this thing. LED uh, slim, LED slim from aquarel, it's a very, very good, good light. Build quality, as I said, is amazing. Look at the quality. 
Look at it, look at it. Right, so this is a light I have on my other tanks, as I said before. I can 100% swear for this. I've had these other lights for years and they're just amazing. Um, and the, this type of light is super, super easy to add to the tank because all you're doing is clipping onto the side like this, right? And then you can adjust this top part here. You can slide it in and out if you want to make it longer. If your tank is a little bit longer or shorter like this for a, for a smaller tank. And um, it's really as simple as this, guys. Look. Put it in like this, push it down on the side, and this light can actually go anywhere. Alright guys, as you can see here, this is what I was talking about, you can actually adjust this light all the way across or back if you don't want to. And um, It fits on the side very, very nicely. Let me plug it in, pan the camera down and back a little bit so you can see. There you go. Did the light come on? Yes it did. Sorry for disappearing there for a second. Alright, so as you can see, it's a really good light actually. That, that brightened up the tank considerably. And as I said as well, you can actually move the light across, backwards and forwards to whatever you want it to do, right? So it was slightly off center there. Let's get into the middle. And there we have our Aquile light setup. Right, so I will be back guys in probably, I don't know, maybe an hour or two, as I said before, we'll check on these little shrimp get them into the tank and then we can wrap up this video okay guys it's been approximately three hours since we did our uh, drip acclimation the shrimp are kind of coloring up but i'm not sure um if i were to buy shrimp and they look like this for the price i paid for them i would be a little bit disappointed because uh some of them look like they're actually blue shrimp and not green at all uh, some of them look like shrimp that are just blue culls so I'll pass the macro camera over them once so you guys can see as well. Let's see if it will go in focus. They are definitely green, some of them, but they, they are not that great. Some of these guys at the back, they look like blue shrimp to me. Some of them are definitely green, but the ones like at the back there on the right hand side, like here, you can see for sure that these are blue shrimp. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is we'll give these guys a few days in the tank. I'll come back with some macro footage and we'll see, we'll see for sure how they get on. Alright, so let's release them into the tank. It's been a long time for them, they've been travelling for a few days. Let's get these guys in here. Now this uh, little thing is stuck to the glass because of suction, there you go. Let's get them in. Yeah, I can definitely see from this angle that these guys are... They look blue to me. Blue to me with a couple of shrimp that look like they're culls. I would consider culls if they were blue. But we we shall see. As I said, we shall see. Maybe I should rever reserve judgment until we've got them all in the tank. Huh? But it's too easy to say, oh, they're just like uh, poor quality or whatever without giving them proper time to colour up. So it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of days. And of course, there they go. In they go. Welcome to your new home, little green jade shrimp. Fingers crossed I'm wrong about them, guys, because uh, it took me a while to get these. I had to move the light there just to get this thing out of the way. I think with a little bit of luck, we might be able to get some macro footage now, if we're lucky. Let's see. Mm -hmm. 